Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 32, the final video in my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. So you've composed, recorded, edited, arranged, mixed and mastered your song in Logic Pro. Now it's time to bounce a final mix for distribution. Now, there's actually a difference between the term bounce and export. They mean two different things in Logic. The term bounce actually comes from the tape machine world where you could take multi-channel tape machines and you could link them together to get more channels. So way back in like the 50s, you might be lucky to have one or two channels, whereas in the 60s, you could have like, you know, four to eight channels, maybe up to 16 channels. And this was done by sort of linking together multiple tape machines. So bouncing described the process of taking multiple channels of information on multiple tape machines and summing it all down to a mono or stereo tape reel, a master tape reel. Exporting in Logic essentially means to export each of the tracks in your project or each of the stems. And there is a difference between multi-tracks and stems, which I will explain later. So in the DAW world, bouncing a project means that you're rendering the entire project down as a stereo wave file, which you can send out for distribution via DistroKid, CD Baby, Bandcamp, and there's a bunch of other ones too. But this is ultimately the final format you'll need to bounce your project at to send it in for distribution. Before we start, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Boombox. This innovative platform is tailored for musicians, producers, and engineers, combining essential tools for creativity and collaboration into one user-friendly experience. With Boombox, you'll enjoy secure file storage for all of your projects, from individual tracks to complete sessions. Collaborate easily by inviting others to your workspace and create customized inboxes for clients and collaborators to upload their files. Plus, Boombox lets you network with fellow artists worldwide, create a standout artist profile to showcase your music, and create customizable playlists that highlight your best work. And don't forget about Boombot AI. This creative assistant is perfect for generating new ideas, helping you with lyrics, splitting stems, and removing vocals. Visit boombox.io and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so there are a few considerations to think about before bouncing. First and foremost, make sure that your stereo output and your master are both set to Unity. If you drop your master fader or pull it up, that's going to affect the volume of the bounce. Another thing we need to determine is the bounce range from the beginning of the song to the end of the song. Now, I know a lot of people start their songs right at bar one. I do not. I do this on purpose just to leave myself a little bit of extra room because I'm not actually going to start the bounce at the very first note. I'm actually going to start the bounce slightly before the first note to give us a little bit of buffer before that first note comes in, just like a quarter of a second or like a half of a second. Some people will do up to one second. Now, the reason why I do this is Bluetooth latency buffering. What this does is it compensates for Bluetooth latency uh, buffers. So if you've ever played a song on your phone via Bluetooth in your car, you've probably noticed that the first like half of a second or quarter of a second gets cut off. So I just like to leave a little bit of extra space where the bounce starts a little bit ahead of the very first note. Now, if you've started your song right at bar one, there is a way to get around this. What you do is you grab this little thing right here and you pull it back and this actually will create like a negative bar. You can create like a, a zero bar. You can create a negative one bar. And this just adds a little bit of extra space to the front end of your project. Uh, so essentially what this is controlling is the end point or the starting point of your song. Now, I don't need to do that because I've started my song at bar two. What I like to do is hit Command-A to select all, to select everything in my project. Hit Command-U to set the cycle range, because that's going to serve as our bounce range. And then what I'll usually do is I'll pull the front end a little bit further in, something like that, and then just give it a listen and see how much that little silence gap is. So it's like a quarter of a second. You know, it's, it's nothing uh, really too long. I could probably even go a little bit further with it.
And then what I do is I go to the very end of the song and I determine where I want the end of the bounce to be. What I do is I listen to the very end of the song and then once I hear silence, I count to three. One, two, three. And that's where I end the song. That's how I do it. It's a very unscientific way of doing it, but that's the way I've always done it. And then I can back up the bounce range there. So the cycle range is going to serve as our bounce range. Okay, so to bounce, you can go up to file and then go down to bounce and then select project or section, or you can press command B. And you'll notice that the start and end range of the bounce shows the bars, beats, divisions, and ticks for the location of the start point and end point of the locators. So that's why it's so important to set that bounce range. Now there's different modes here, automatic, offline, and real time. In almost every situation, unless you're using external hardware in your mix or on your master, you're going to use offline. It's going to go a heck of a lot quicker that way. If you use a real time bounce, it means the entire song needs to play from beginning to end in order to create that final audio file. I usually use this when I'm mastering with hardware, but if you're not using any hardware, use offline. Up here, the destination is going to show you the file type that you're bouncing to. PCM type files are things like AIFF and WAV files, uncompressed formats. You can bounce to MP3. These are good for like sending a smaller file to collaborators or sending a mix to a client who hasn't paid their bill yet. You can also use M4A if you prefer that. Or if you're old school and you want to burn to a CD, you can do that too. But most of the time, I'm just choosing PCM. I like to go with a WAV file. And then you have to choose your bit depth and your sample rate of your final bounce. Now, back when we mastered to CD, the Red Book format for mastering to CD was 16-bit and 44.1. Pretty much every single distribution platform is going to need a sample rate of 44.1. So even if you record it at a higher sample rate, you're gonna drop the sample rate here at this point down to 44.1. If you happen to be bouncing something that's going to be used for film or video, you may wanna go with 48 because a lot of video projects are 48, but I'm gonna choose 44.1 for this. Now the bit depth, you have a little bit of wiggle room here. Some distributors will accept 24-bit files. I believe DistroKid does, but if you use like CD Baby, they still only accept 16-bit files. So that's one we go ahead and select here. You can choose between a split or interleaved file. You definitely want an interleaved file here. A split file is gonna separate the left and right channels. So interleaved is going to combine the left and right channels into one file. It's not going to sum the channels. It's just that it'll be a stereo file that contains both left and right channels. Dithering is a type of low level noise that is added to the signal to compensate for word length reduction from like a higher bit depth down to a lower bit depth. Power dithering, P-O-W-R, means psychoacoustically optimized word length reduction. That is what that means. I guarantee you, you will not be able to hear much of a difference or any difference between a dithered file and an undithered file. But it, just as a general rule, if I'm going from 24-bit down to 16-bit, I will turn on power dithering one. The only time you need to use dithering is when you're going from a higher bit depth down to a lower bit depth. The sample rate does not matter, and if you're going from a lower bit depth up to a higher bit depth, it's not going to matter. And if you're bouncing at the same bit depth as the project, again, dithering's not going to matter. You don't need it. So only use this if you're going from 24-bit down to 16-bit or 32-bit down to 16-bit or 24-bit. You can choose to include tempo information, which I am not going to do. You can include audio tails if you want. And you can also choose to normalize your project or apply overload protection. If you properly mixed and mastered your song, you do not need this option on. I always turn it off for my bounces. Okay, so let's go ahead and click OK. And then you can choose a location for your bounce. If you are working with a Logic Project folder, this will create a bounces folder inside of your Logic Project folder. And if you're using a project package, you're just gonna have to choose a location for the bounce. So I'll just give the song a name here and then click bounce. And you can see it bounces out the whole song offline. So it's actually moving faster 
than the, you know, the actual playback of the track would be. Okay, so the project is bounced. You just have to go locate that file. Here it is. And we can just press spacebar to audition it. Yeah, so I just like to listen to the whole song, make sure there's no errors in there. I also like to check the uh, the silence gap at the end just to make sure everything is all good. And then you can send this audio file out for distribution. Now, another thing you may want to do, again, if you're working with a co-producer or a mixing engineer or a mastering engineer, you may need to send multi-track files or stems to another collaborator. The best way and easiest way to do this in Logic is to open up all of your track stacks. I'm going to open all of them up so we can see all of the individual channels. And then if you have any like track stacks inside of track stacks, make sure to open up those as well. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to export these tracks rather than bounce them. And so the way you do that is you go up to file, you go to export, and then you select all tracks as audio files or use the shortcut shift command E. And then you're going to find a location to export these to. So just create a new folder. I recommend saving them all in one folder. You can choose the range. So you can choose whether you want to export the whole project and just trim the silence at the end of the files. Or you can choose to export only the cycle range or the, the file length to the end of the project. I'm going to choose the cycle range here. Again, you can choose your format. For exporting, I would just go with the bit depth. Uh, that you recorded at, so 24-bit for me. You can choose to bypass effects plugins. I'm not going to do that because I want my effects baked into the tracks. You can choose to include audio tails, include volume and pan automation. You can also include tempo information. And then you can choose to normalize or overload protect. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and then just click export. And what this is going to do is it's going to export every single individual track. It's also going to export all of the track stacks as stems. So the difference between a multi-track and a stem is that a multi-track is just a single instrument or a single voice, just a single track in your mix. A stem literally stands for a stereo master file. And so this is like a stereo file that may contain uh, one or multiple tracks combined into one, possibly with all effects baked into that as well, including time-based effects and auxiliary channel strips. So all of these aux tracks with time-based effects on them are going to be sort of baked into the stems for the lead vocals, for uh, the pre-chorus group, for the group harmonies. And then we're also gonna, going to get an additional stem for all of the vocals and all of the instrumentals. So there's a lot of different ways to break this up, but I find this is uh, the easiest method to achieve this. Okay, so all of the multi-tracks and stems are exported. You're going to have to sort of identify these just visually, like these are all individual vocal channels. This is a stem of the full instrumental. This is a stem of all the vocals. I told you the that you faithless. So anything that is a track stack in your mix is going to end up being a stem, and anything that's an individual channel will end up being an individual channel. So that's how you can export your project as multi-tracks and stems.
And that wraps up my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. I thoroughly hope you have enjoyed this course. Thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.